So in our final lesson of this chapter, chapter 20, uh, lesson 29, we are going to look at focus positions and focus arcs. Uh, this is a tool that I don't really use that much, to be honest, because I, uh, I end up doing everything in the lighting desk. All the projects I work on, the whole point of it is to is to program something uh, with a lighting desk and, and WYSIWYG is there as a tool to, to help us in that process and to help the designer work. So focus positions become sort of fairly redundant for me. Uh, I'd rather focus everything manually because a designer has very specific requirements. But they have its uses. Uh, I understand how it can be useful for events um, and concerts where you have an enormous number of lights all basically pointing at the same place or you want to try to do a quick and dirty array of, of uh, like a wash or pars just because it needs to look nice and neat, um, everything incrementally ordered and, and rotated just the right way. Um, but not without that sort of specificity that we have in the theatre industry to make sure something's pointing in a particular place and every light's individual. So I'm going to take you through what I know about focus positions, um, just explain where the features are. And after that, I'm going to let you play with it and think about how you'd want to use it in your projects. So lesson 29, we're going to look at focus positions and arcs. Um, I've just added a plane into this uh, into this scene just to just to help me demonstrate the point. It's really hard to do this without some scenery in the way, but uh, my other scenery is too complex and just getting in the way at the moment. So just a quick and dirty plane. It's a bit a bit untidy. I just did it really quickly. Um, and I dropped it down a little bit lower, it's sort of eight meters under the floor, just because I couldn't bother to move all my lights. But it means that we got we got something we can focus on to anyway. So to start with, we're going to add a focus point. So you go to draw, uh, it's a focus, focus position. We're going to set one center stage. So we're going to call it FP1, leave that in there. It's automatically creating a layer for us called focus. So all the focus positions will end up on their own layer. Click OK. So it's automatically created that layer focus. Um, and I'm just going to put this pretty much at zero, zero, just there. And, and I'm going to lower it down. So it's quite hard to see because it's clustered around all my lights. I'm just going to go edit and move. And in my front view, I'm just going to lower it down to there. So it's going to work in the three in the three dimensional space. So that little datum point there, that's where all these lights are going to point to. So if I select my uh, five spots there, we're going to use these for this exercise because it's nice and convenient. Uh, they're nice and small. Uh, source walls. That's interesting. Doesn't want to select these ones. Is that because they're not source fours, or because I've made them a different uh, different length type? Okay, well I'll do it the old-fashioned way and uh, select these. I've still got some odd fixtures and things assigned there. Um, interestingly, there's a nice tool that I get to show you now, which is fixture groups. If you come down here to your quick quick toolbar, um, while you've got something selected, we right-click new fixture group. You get to name it. I'm going to call this source for 10 degree and now if I want to select those again I just select my quick fixture group really useful when you get into design mode actually to have done that so it's worth going through and just making fixtures like all your booms all your side booms one side and then the other side different colors all your overhead movers uh, it will save you a bit of time later on if you just want to play around a bit so now I've got all those set I can go to properties and I can all fixtures selected, focus position, set it to FP1. And when I click OK, everything points to that fixture point. Uh, what happens if I move that around? Do my lights move as well? They do. So you can just see them moving in, in the view down here. So move it over there, you can see them all move. And if I click on my source source again, there they go. So that's a nice convenient way to, to focus lights. Um, if you needed to refocus them really quickly, you just swap them to a different focus focus position. So I could draw another one, uh, focus position, FP2, stick it over there, um, and I'll select those fixtures, properties, and sign up to FP2, and they'll all just swap over to that side. Oh, and of course, because it's not on the ground, it's up in the air, they're trying to, to light through the air to get to it. So in addition to focus points, you also have uh, focus lines, uh, if I come down here, focus lines, focus arcs. To be honest, I don't really use these very often. Um, I think you have to have a, a, a rig with an array that's in the same shape um, of the of the focus line. So, um, 
you know, someone else can post that video. I think I'll just say that it's not something I've had any experience with, so I'm not going to try and uh, try and fool you all in to knowing what's what I'm doing with it. So, um, but you know, focus positions can be quite useful if you need to just to build some some points. For instance, a piano that moves around on stage or uh, a podium. Uh, that's that's kind of what it's there for. Uh, as I said, I don't really need to use it. I, I focus everything manually. Um, so I'll select a light. I'll take a you know one of these lights here source fours, properties um, and go to my cuts and I can see what it's pointing at and I can move up and down obviously in this case we don't really have much to to go by Ooh. see more of the plan there it's come straight down there we go so now I'm seeing a bit of floor and you can see the other lights you've got to try and get past so I might do that and then I might bring in my shutter cut Bring it in like this, sort of see how that works. It's quite a useful tool. Spin the barrel if you needed to. Spin the whole light. Effectively, what it's doing is that they're putting a camera in in the lens tube. If you make it a larger or smaller lens, you'll see that the, the circle gets bigger too. So it's uh, it's been quite clever um, trying to show you exactly what the beam's doing. Uh, it's actually an easier way to focus the light than it is in real life. The difference is that you've got to do it by yourself. You don't get a team of people to help you. So uh, if a designer wants to work for every light one at a time, it can take a, take a long time. Uh, you can, for instance, if you're focusing at your booms, I know we've only done one set here, but if let's take these two, which are next to each other, uh, they are a little bit higher. Um, go to properties. We can edit them together. So the tilt to bring them up so they're vertical, I think, will be 90. Or will it be no other way? Minus 90. Click apply. So they're going straight across the stage. Obviously, the stage in this case is a bit low. Uh, I'll then click on CSC Source 4 Juniors, go to cuts, and edit them together. Now, in this case, I can't see the point of view because I've got too many, but I can see what they're doing when I click apply. So I might just do this to cut it off the stage. Click apply to see that the shutters have moved slightly. I might bring it down quite a lot so it's not so high. I'm just going to cut off above their heads. Click apply again. You can see the beams just cutting in and out. So we can actually edit all of our booms in one go like that and get a rough, a rough focus across all of our lights and then come back and do them one at a time and just tweak them. Um, it's just as time consuming as it is on stage, to be honest. If you need four hours to focus on stage, you need four hours to do it in... In WYSIWYG, uh, I suppose it's a little bit less sweaty, um, but yeah, as I say, you've got to do it by yourself. Uh, you can't have two of you focusing at the same time. So there you go. That's lights. We're at the end of this chapter now. Um, chapter four. Uh, we've done seven lessons on how to how to rig lights, how to how to patch them, how to manipulate them. Uh, in the next chapter, chapter five, we're going to start looking at the data mode um, up here, and we're going to have a look at how we can. Uh, do some more of the patching in there, how we can edit fixtures, how we can um, manipulate all of the attributes of a fixture within the spreadsheet mode, uh, how the uh, troubleshooting and error messaging system works. It's really handy just to make sure that you're not getting anything wrong. Quite a short chapter. Um, we're going to have a quick look at design mode in the chapter after that in chapter 6. Uh, chapter 7, we're going to look at how we can create paperwork. Um, and then chapter 8, we're going to get onto the good stuff. We're going to look at how to connect the light and desk up and make this all look pretty. So... Thank you much for following me so far. I hope this has been useful. Uh, please stick with it and please give me your feedback so I can keep making the videos better.